Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for another opportunity the Lord has granted me to come and to lift up his holy name on this Saturday. Praise God. October the 1st. First day in October 2022. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Once again, declaring that Jesus Christ is the answer. Praise God. He's the answer to all of our problems and we have only to put our trust in him. Praise God. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not to our own understanding. And I do know, praise God, God is not a man that he should lie. His word is yea and amen. Praise God. He's able to do abundantly above all that we ever could ask if we would only put our trust in him. But I do have a word. Praise God. I have a word from the, for the, from the Lord just for you today. Amen. Once again, praise God. Turn with me to Matthew's Gospel, 23rd chapter. And I, I do encourage you, as always, to look with me and praise God. Uh, it's time out for taking people word for what does say the Lord. Praise God. Let's praise God. Let's let's look for ourselves and and allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, to speak to us. I mean, directly through His Spirit. Praise God. God is not a respected person. Praise God. Matthew twenty three, and uh, again uh, we're looking at verse. 33. We're going to start there again. Matthew 23 and 33. And uh, it reads, Christ speaking says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore I send you unto you prophets, he says, and wise men and scribes, some of them you shall kill and crucify. Some of them you shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, verse 35, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel, praise God, unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom you slew between the temple and the altar. Verily, verily, Christ says, I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. And then he says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stoned them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her chickens under her wings, and you would not. And that great verse in 38 there, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, we bless you and thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity. Lord, you granted me to come to, praise God, to share, to speak your word today to your people. Lord, we uh, lift up those in Florida and those in Carolina and up the coast. Lord, who lost their property, and Lord, many lives have been lost. We pray for those families right now. And Lord, we realize, Lord, that just as uh, they have encountered this tra tragedy in Florida, in Carolina, it could very easily happen here in Birmingham, Alabama, and all over the nation. So Lord, we pray for them right now. We lift them up, Father, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, I pray that as your word go forth today, Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, might go before me. Lord, and speak to the hearts of your people these words, these very words that you have placed in our place and in my heart at this very moment. And Lord, I'd be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, we uh, uh, again taking our subject from that verse 38. Matthew 23, verse 38. Well, the Lord says to uh, the leaders in Israel, uh, behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Praise God, your house. And that's our subject. Christ, once again, Christ has left the house. Christ has left the house. Your house is left unto you deserted, desolate, absent of my presence is what the Lord is saying. Amen. Now, this is part two. Praise God. We began uh, this study on, um, on, on on Thursday. Thursday, yes. And uh, But this is part two of a three-part uh, series that we uh, know of right now. That may change. It may be four. But 
at least we know that it's a three part uh, to the series as far as the Lord has instructed me at this very point. But now Christ has left the house is the subject uh, that I want us to concentrate upon uh, because it is a sad thing when the presence of the Lord is not in our lives, not in our fellowship, praise God, not in our nation, not in our leaders. It's a very sad situation. But now, first of all, before we get started, I want to encourage you to go back, listen to part one, praise God, of this message before you attempt to uh, uh, get into part two. We can't do a great review, and therefore it would help you if you would go to one first before you try to listen to two. Now, in part one of our message, we stopped at verse number 36. Verse 36 is where we stopped at, where Christ says here, very last unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Praise God. Verse 36. Christ uh, himself pronounced judgment. He pronounced judgment upon the religious leaders in Israel, but not only uh, the religious leaders, but all the leaders, the civic leaders also, because the religious leaders also, actually they were civic uh, leaders also of the people of Israel. Praise God. Uh, but now Christ pronounced judgment upon them. Why? For the sin of murder, the sin of murder, Praise God. Murder of those whom he had sent to give them directions, to give them warnings. And especially he mentions here in our text from the days of Abel, Abel, Cain and Abel, the first two uh, men that God uh, placed upon the earth, uh, fr uh, products of, of uh, Adam and Eve there. Uh, so he said, especially from the days of Abel down through the days of the prophet Zacharias. All that space between there. Praise God. Now, there had been other judgments placed upon Israel uh, for their sins of disobedience down through the years. Praise God. Their sins of, of murmuring and their sins of complaining against God. Praise God. Their sins of, uh, of sexual impurities. Many judgments had come down uh, for which uh, they suffered greatly. Yes. Praise God. They spent many years. Israel spent much of their time, quite a bit of their time in captivity and also their temple, which was the center of their fellowship with one another as well as with God. Their temple was desecrated. Praise God. And they were scattered all over the earth. And most of us are familiar with the fact that you got the German Jews, you got the Russian Jews, you got the Swedish Jews, you got Jews everywhere because they were scattered all over the earth. Praise God. And, and all of their judgments and captivities, God, our God, through the mouth of his prophets, had warned them. Praise God. He made it plain to Israel. God made it very plain to Israel that they were not to resist the Gentile captors, the one that came to take them captive. They were not to re resist them, but they were to submit to them. God made that very plain because he said, I sent them. I sent them is what God said. I sent them to punish the evil doers. But now there were always leaders in Israel, always that revolted against God's judgment. In other words, they would not submit and they would not accept the fact that the God of Israel would use their enemies to chastise his people. They wouldn't accept that, but praise God, he's, a, he's, he's done it over and over again. But sometimes, you know, when you don't have eyes to see and ears to hear, you continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. Praise God. See, he has to open our understanding. He has to open our ears and open our eyes that we might see what is right before us. Praise God. But now God had warned Israel of the fact that uh, uh, they were not to uh, fight against their uh, captors when they come to get them because that was God's way of bringing judgment upon them. Look at uh, Jeremiah. Let's look at Jeremiah 27. And again, if, if you can't find scriptures, you know, a reasonable time, 
write it down, go back later on, and I believe that God will give you the revelation that you need at that time, at this time, for your uh, progress and for your growth. Now, Jeremiah 27 now, what we're saying here, we're saying that uh, the God of Israel would, you go, would, would, would use the enemies to chastise the people, but they wouldn't accept that. They wouldn't believe that. But it's right in the word of God, over and over again. Jeremiah 27 and 8. Look at verse 8 there. And it reads, and it shall come to pass that the nation are and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, uh, king of Babylon, and will not put their necks, volunteer, put their necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, hmm, that nation will I punish. That's what God said, that nation, or that people, whoever they are. Hmm? That nation will I punish, said the Lord, with the sword, with the famine, with the pestilence, until I have consumed them by his hand, by Nebuchadnezzar's hand. Hmm? Look at verse 9. Therefore hearken not to your prophets. Hmm? Your prophets, Israel's prophets now, who said a different thing. They're not saying what God says, like the preachers today. They're not saying what God says. They're saying what is a fabrication of their own imagination. Hmm? Look at verse 9 now. Therefore hearken not to your prophets, nor your diviners, nor your dreamers, nor your enchanters, he says, nor your sorcerers. He called them sorcerers. You, you think they're all gone? No, we have them today. Praise God, we have these same uh, diviners, uh, dreamers, enchanters, and sorcerers operating in our churches today. Praise God. He said, but don't listen to them. Don't hearken to them. We speak unto you saying, you shall not serve the king of Babylon. Huh? Don't listen to them. Look what he said in verse 10. For they prophesy a lie. Jeremiah 27 and 10. For they, your so-called prophets, your so-called apostles, they prophesy a lie unto you to have you removed far from your land. They're going to get you kicked out of your house. You listen to them, what he said, and that I should drive you out and you shall perish. Look at verse 11. But the nation that bring their next submission under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain in their own land. If you don't fight them, praise God, I'll give them instruction not to take your land from you, but let you live there, hmm? saith the Lord. And they shall till it and dwell therein. You'll be able to live there, dwell there, and live, but yet you'll be under the yoke, under the government, of whatever that nation is that I bring to chastise you. Now, that's what God says to Jeremiah. But now, the, your prophets are telling you a lie. He said they're prophesying a lie. They're telling you a lie. A lot of lies being told in the church today. God wants you rich. God wants you to have all and have. Honey, let me tell you something. God wants you to repent. That's what you, the, today, the, today we need people who will come before God in humility and come and repent repent of their sins. That's what God wants today. See, but God made it plain. God made it very plain to his people that they were not to resist. That's, that's important. Now, not to resist when I bring chastisement upon you through a uh, people and by a people that you don't like, you hate them. But God said, don't resist. Huh? When I send the unsaved, huh? to punish you. Amen. But to you submit to them. That's what God said. Just submit. Just submit to them. And all going to go well with you. Praise God. See, now this, the Lord stated from the very beginning of the nation of Israel. He told them this over and over again. When they come and chastise you, do not resist. But now here in our text, now here in our text today, Christ is looking down the line to that day, 40 years later, going to be 40 years later between what he says now and that judgment going to come. When, but, but now he's looking down the line. Praise God. I'm talking about our omnipotent God. Oh, he knows it all. He's looking down the line 40 years later now when his judgment for the murdering, murdering. Now remember, that's the main, there's a lot of sins that Israel committed, but it's the murdering. It's the murdering. It's the murdering of his prophets, of his apostles, and of his people. He's looking down the line. And, and he's seeing that day when, when, when the judgment would fall upon the nation of Israel like never before. Hmm? 
Praise God. He's heard the cries. The Lord has heard the cries of the, the, the innocent blood of his prophets and his apostles. And now the wages of their sins is at hand. It's time. Praise God. Listen to Christ now. See, let's listen to Christ as he stands looking over. Looking, He's looking over that great city, Jerusalem. Listen to him now. He's lamenting over it. He has a broken heart over what he sees huh, is coming upon them. Praise God. He sees the worst suffering that his people has ever had to endure, and he's not happy about it. Hmm? But as many as I love, I'll chasten you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Look at Matthew 23 now. As Christ looks, just, just can you picture, uh, imagine him, Matthew 23. Let me see if I can find it. 23, 23. Look, can you imagine him uh, looking over that city from a high point there, looking over that city, and he says these very words, Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, thou that killeth the prophets and stoned them that are sent unto thee. How often, how often would I have gathered thy children together? How often? Mm-hmm. Even though the hen gather her chickens under her wings and ye would not. And well, we understand that if you've been down the country, and uh, at any time, then where well, they got a lot of chickens and roosters and all that, you'll notice when the danger come, praise God, automatically the hen will throw them wings up and she's want to, some them chicks come running and they get up on her wing. Christ said, I've done it. I would have. I would have. How often would I have gathered you together? The hen gather her chickens under her wings, but you, you stiff necked people, you full of pride people, hmm, will not repent. You wouldn't allow me. Praise God. But now, when, when Christ repeats those words, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, twice now. He says it twice. Praise God. See, I, I, I can feel it. I feel it in my spirit, though. I feel I can feel him and sense in my spirit uh, 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 his pity for these people, his people, his pity, his love for his people. Praise God. And, and, and it's not just the religious leader for the religious leaders that he's mourning over, but for the whole city. The whole city. Hmm? See, when calamity comes, the good and the bad suffer together. Hmm? The only difference is that the good, the saved people, praise God, to be absent from the body is going to be present with the Lord. Praise God. We're not exempt. We're not exempt from the floods in Florida, the floods in Carolina. We're not exempt here. Praise God. No believers are exempt from the tragedies. The only thing that we can rejoice in is that if God take me away, then I know that I'm going to, hallelujah, I'm going home. I'm going to the presence of my God. Amen. But now Christ said, Jerusalem, and I can feel, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I feel the pity in his heart. I feel the love. Praise God he have for them. For this great city. Used to be a great city. Huh? Praise God. America used to be a great nation. <laughs> a great nation. Until they fall um, completely dismiss God from our affairs. Now we have a different kind of city. Hmm? But Christ mourns over Jerusalem here. Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, thou that killed the prophets there. He mourns for this city that once once called Salem. Jerusalem. It used to be Salem. That used to be the name before it was changed to Jerusalem. Salam. But it was Salem at first. Praise God. And when King Michalodek, Michalodek was king, he was the leader at that time. But now, praise God, it's, it's the name changed to Jerusalem. And Christ said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Praise God. It, it, and now it's the people that's going to suffer here. The judgment of God. All the people. That whole generation. See, Christ is, is here in, in, in this 37th verse. He, he's bemoaning his people because he delighted not in the death of the wicked. It don't give God any pleasure hmm, to have to chastise even the wicked people. Praise God. And his people caught up in the mill. Praise God. And like I say, though, but we, we know where we're going. I know where I'm going. I, if tragedy strikes my, my, my house, I know where I am going. Amen. Praise God. But the Lord delighted not in the, the tragedies and the death of the wicked. But now, if we look at Luke, though, Luke, let's go to Luke there. Luke gives us another picture of Christ standing, looking over the hill, looking at Jerusalem and lamenting. And, and, and he, and, and he, he, he gives another account of his emotion. Emotional mm, distress that he displayed as he anticipated the judgments. 
Praise God upon the murderers of the innocent. Mm, you can run, but you can't hide. If you, praise God, are partakers, or if you are, have given your blessings to the murder that goes on today, let me tell you something. There will be a judgment. Amen? Look at Luke, how he describes that. Luke 19. Yeah, write it down now. If you can't uh, uh, find your scriptures, write it down. Luke 19. Luke sees Christ lamenting also, mm -hmm, as Matthew did. And he describes it like this, Luke 19, 41. 41, he says, and when he, talking about Christ, was come near, near Jerusalem, he beheld the city, and he wept over it. Can you imagine? The creator, the God of all, the God of all gods, the creator, he's weeping, he's crying, he sees what's going to happen. Oh, this omnipotent God, he sees his omniscient God, this omnipresent God, he sees exactly what's going to happen years and years down the line. Luke said he wept over the city. Look at verse 42. What the saying, if thou hast known, Christ said these words, if thou, Jerusalem, had known, even thou, at least in this thy day, if you had known the things which belong unto thy peace, Hmm? The things that's going to unravel your peace, going to take your peace from you, if you had known. Praise God. For now they are hid, he says, from thine eyes. They're hid. You can't see it. Hmm? You can't see it. You're blind. Huh? Many people are blind today. Hmm? Many religious leaders are blind today. We have the blind leading the blind. And you know, the Bible said they will both fall into the ditch Amen. Look at verse 42, 43 there. He said, for the day shall come. That's what Christ said. He said, the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. They're going to surround you. They're going to surround you. That's what he told them, huh? And come past thee round about and keep thee on every side. Can't get away. Can't be. They're going to box you in is what he said, huh? And shall, verse 44, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. Hmm? Many dead bodies, many dead, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. If all these beautiful buildings hmm, that you brag so much about, hmm, not one stone, not one stone. When they, when they get through, when they get through, not one stone shall be upon another. Huh? Why? Because thou knewest not the day of my visitation. You didn't know me. You, I came unto my own, my own received me not. You didn't know me. You didn't know me. Do you know the Lord today? Hmm? Do you know him? I know you can be religious, but now you can be religious and lost. But I'm talking about a relationship. I'm talking about have you had that encounter, that encounter with the Lord that changed your life, huh? that makes you an altogether different person, the way you think. Hmm? Do your thinking line up with the word of God today? Hmm? I say what God says. I don't care what man says. I don't care. I don't care what kin folks say. I don't care what nobody says. I care about what God says. When God says it, that's it. Praise God. It's all over. Amen. But Christ said, there shall not be one stone upon another that shall not be torn down because you did not know me. When I come, when I came, my vis my day of visitation. That's what Christ says. Since so, and, and it happened just like he says here. 40 years later, 40 years later, just as Christ has prophesied. Now, here in Jerusalem, in Jerusalem now, God's people, at this point, now, at this time, right now, at this time uh, that Christ speak of, they were under the authority of the Roman government. They had been conquered by the Romans. Christ allowed them to be conquered by the Romans. The Romans conquered the Greeks. And now the Romans are in charge of Jerusalem. Praise God. I mean, Israel just been moving from place to place. And uh, why? Disobedient. We'll not listen to the word of God. Mm, America, you think you're going to escape? Do you think you, come on, come on now, come on now. You, you're not going to escape. But now the, the people are under the authority of the Romans right now, right there, right now as Christ speak here because of their continual sins and their continual disobedience, disobeying the word of God. They're under the Roman rule. The Romans allowed them. Just like Christ said, if you don't buck them, if you don't come against them, they'll let you live in your city. And the Romans allowed the Jews to live in the city of Jerusalem and to go about their daily business. Just pay your taxes. Hmm? Got to pay some tribute money. Now, you got to pay a little money. But now we'll let y'all go ahead on. And, but now, remember, we're in charge now. We, we don't, don't buck us now. We're in charge. 
Praise God. As long as they did not rebel against the, the, the Roman government, then everything was all right. Mm. Seemed like um, we ought to be able to take that medicine if, if that's what God said, since we know we've been disobedient, you know. But now, as it was, though, just as it was in Jeremiah's days. Oh, Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. They called Jeremiah the weeping. I wonder why he cried so much. Hard-head people, ignorant, hard-head people. Oh, boy, I can sympathize with him because I, I see it every day. Huh? Hard-head leaders that will not lead this nation to repentance for the sins we'll commit it and we're piling sin on top of sin. Praise God. But now, yeah, my days, there were, there were, there were, there were three parties in Israel's leadership, three parties, praise, in, in their leadership, and it's somewhat, somewhat similar to what we have in America, uh, in our government today. One faction said it was, uh, the hand of God. Hmm? That's what they said. It was the hand of God that brought them under the Roman rule. That's what a lot of people said. Well, well, this is God. So now we can't fight God. That's what they said. He has allowed us to be under the rule of this Roman government, and therefore we should submit. That's what one crowd said. We that we need to submit. Don't don't we, we let's not rebel against them. But now these other parties, you had other a couple of other parties there. They uh said we'll we'll never submit. We'll never submit. We're gonna resist God at any cost. All cost. We're gonna resist God. And this is an attitude which they had projected all the days of their of their nationhood. And that's why they was drifting from one place to another constantly. Hot headedness will get you nowhere. Your arms are too short to box against God. You're going to get knocked out. You're going to get knocked out like Israel got knocked out and like America is going to get knocked out because we won't listen to God. But now that uh, that faction said, we're going we, we to resist. We're going to resist uh, ruling, have anybody rule over us. And this is an attitude which they projected all their days, all their days, over and over again. And it caused them to re be removed from their homeland. That was never God's intention. He just wanted them to submit you got to submit to somebody's authority. You got to, you can't do what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it, as long as you want to do it. You can't do it. You got to be on somebody's authority. But these stiff necked people, mm, they decided that they were not going to do it. And therefore, they were removed over and over again from their homeland. Let's look at the, the psalm. Look at Psalms 81. Listen to the psalmist. As he, praise God, described uh, these people in the attitude. Psalms 81. Psalms number 81. Let's find that. Psalms number 81. And let's look at 10 now. The psalmist, he described the long-standing rebellious attitude of God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And, and don't criticize them because I tell you, uh, America, you're in the same boat here. Your whipping is on its way. There's no doubt about that. Psalms 81.10. Look at it. The Lord, he said, the Lord said, I am the Lord thy God. Psalms 81 and 10, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I'll fill it. I forgot to say, just open up. But my people, he says in verse 11, would not hearken. They would not hear. they my voice. Hmm? And Israel would have none of me. They didn't want me to lead them. Praise God. We won't have this man to reign over us is what they said. Look at verse 12. So I gave them up. I gave them up unto their own hearts lust. And they walked in their own counsel, doing what they wanted to do. America, you don't want to follow the word of God, do you? You want to do what you want to do. Well, there's a cause for that. Hmm? Look at 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should have soon subdued their enemies if they had obeyed me. I would have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against that adversary if they only would have obeyed me. Look at verse 15. The haters of the Lord. Oh, yes, the haters. I know a lot of you say, I don't hate him, hmm? but you don't serve him, though, do you? You don't obey him, do you? You either for me or you're against me. That's no middle ground here. You can't, ain't no purgatory. I know you've been told about a purgatory. Ain't no pur ain't no layaway. Ain't no place you can go. You're either going to be with the Lord or you're going straight to hell. That's the Bible there. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. Praise God. And their time would have endured forever. Oh, boy, if they just had submitted. You know, in our text now, Jesus, he, he saw the awful punishment that his people would have to endure. He saw that. Hmm? He's God. He saw that. 
They would have to endure this punishment for murdering him, praise God, and his prophets. And the Lord was deeply saddened. Uh, the Jewish historian uh, by the name of Josephus, Josephus there, this is a condensed version of it. I've got the original text also. Jewish historian, uh, his writings give us an account of the seven-year war between Israel and the Roman government when they rebelled against Rome. Hmm? See, Josephus was born, uh, according to the book here, he was born in A.D. 37, and he died around A.D. 100. And he says it was around A.D. 63, somewhere in that neighborhood, that the ruling parties in Israel decided that they would no longer submit. Oh, you know, pay no taxes. Well, we ain't pay no taxes to the Romans no more. Huh? Praise God. No more. And again, as before, they would not heed the warnings. Also the warnings of the prophets that God sent to them, begging them, don't do it. Do not resist. God is with these people. Do submit to them because the Lord has sent them. Hmm? I know, you know, what they do to them. They killed many of them. Just killed many of them. Oh, boy. But let me tell you something. That blood that was shed, all the blood that's been shed, Mm -hmm. That blood is speaking. That's a voice to that blood. Now, in those seven years of fighting, now, Josephus here, Jewish historian, he acted as a mediator between Israel and between the Roman government, trying to get the uh, Israelis' leaders to surrender, to submit, to repent, to repent to God. Uh, but like our leaders today, you, have you heard them anything? You heard anybody talk about repent today? Huh? Well, maybe America isn't I. Maybe we're just a holy nation here. Maybe, oh, maybe we're such a moral people. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. But like our leaders today, they decided to fight. Israel decided to fight against the will of God, to rebel against God's word that was spoken to them by God's prophets. Mm. But now it, it's, it's just amazing to me. It's amazing that the, the similarities I, 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 the, between Israel's governing parties then and ours today. Similarities. Huh? There were at this time two ruling parties, ruling parties. Now you had the third party, which was the people wanted to submit. But the two ruling parties, fighting each other for power, jockeying for power, refused to repent and submit to God. And there were the common people, like I say, who wanted to submit rather than have their city, beautiful city, their temple, beautiful temple. They didn't want it destroyed again. It had been destroyed before. And they didn't want to think of it being destroyed again. But those two ruling parties were so busy fighting each other for power. Mm -hmm. that the Roman general Titus himself, he decided to just camp outside those walls of that great city. Just camp out there. Starve them to death. Don't let no food go in. Don't let no food come in there. And only water. They had water running underneath, and I guess he could have damned it up, but he didn't He didn't do that. But now he said he's just going to wait it out and let them starve to death huh? and kill each other. Mm, huh? By not allowing the food to enter the city and allowing them to fight each other, he felt that he could gain victory if he just be patient. Hmm? Oh boy. Now, Josephus describes the awful condition that's within that was in the walls, the city's walls. He describes it like this. He says that uh, many thousands died of starvation. Hmm? Uh, because the ruling parties took all the food from the common people. Yes. And they were too weak, so weak, they couldn't even bury the dead. So with the Bible, uh, Josephus said they stacked them up in, in houses, dead bodies stacked up to the ceiling in the houses. Many of the Jews were murdered for refusing to give up their food. Now, this is an internal fighting here. Hmm? Eternal fighting. You know, the old saying is that uh, America's going to go down because of the infighting. Hmm, can, do you kind of believe that? Uh, look at the turmoil. Look what we got. Uh, a nation of lawlessness. Hmm, there are no, oh, no, no the, 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 the criminals are empowered today mm, by our leaders. Uh, that's that, the same problem here. Many of the Jews were murdered. They were murdered by, by their kin and by the ruling faction inside the wall for refusing to give up their food and their valuables. And for simply talking about surrendering to the Romans, if they mentioned surrender, surrender, if they just mentioned surrendering and, 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 and not fighting, they were murdered. 
Hmm? Praise God. They were dying. Praise God. They, 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 they were dying because they wanted to do it God's way. And they killed them for that reason. But, the, but Josephus said, as all as they died, they all would look toward the temple. Keep that in mind. Now, we'll, we'll deal with that as we, we go into this third part. They all would die looking to the temple because they know that that is what the place where God was. God was. I say was now. He was there, and that was the center. That was the centerpiece of their lives. That temple was. That very temple was. They looked toward the temple as they were dying. Amen? But now, Josephus said that the bodies were so abundant, so many bodies, from the murdering inside the city. I ain't talking about, I'm not talking about Titus outside killing them. No, no. This is inside. Huh? This is inside the city. The suicides, the starvations that these evil rulers Praise God, so many of them, these evil rulers began to throw bodies over the walls, over the walls, the high walls in Jerusalem, into the valley area down below. They began to throw bodies down there. Praise God, the Bible said, I mean, well, Josephus said that the stench, the stench and the sight were so awful that the Roman general Titus Himself now, a pagan, looked up to heaven. He looked up to heaven, prayed God. And Josephus said, he was heard to have said, I call God, I call God to witness this day that this evil was not my doing. I didn't do this. Lord, I want you to know, this is the unbeliever. Lord, I did not do this. But the cold-hearted leaders, hmm, demonic, demonic leaders inside the city, Mm -hmm. They were the cause of the problems. They wouldn't lead the people to submission to God, but to rebel as we are doing today, as we see are happening right now. Praise God. Jerusalem was such a beautiful city. It was a beautiful city. And the Romans had no intention of destroying it. Never. No intention. But only keeping it under their control. That's all they wanted. It was too beautiful to, to destroy. Mm -hmm. But just like our leaders today, those inside the city would not repent of their sins and submit to the will of God. Therefore, God's judgment could not be delayed any longer. It couldn't be aborted. Now, finally, Josephus says starvation in the city was so bad that the people were forced to chew on their belts in their shoe leather. Mm -mm. In particular, he said there was one woman named Mary who was at one time very wealthy, very wealthy. But after her fellow Jews robbed her of all that she had and left her with nothing to eat. She killed her infant son and cooked him and began to eat him. Hmm? And it said that the starving people smelt the aroma of that cooking of that meat. And they all came running to her house. And when they saw what she was eating, they ran away screaming wishing they were dead, many committing suicide immediately. But finally, Josephus said a meeting was called. They agreed to a meeting between General Titus and the rebel, Jewish rebels, and the terms put forth by the rebels was an insult to the Romans. So in AD 30, AD 70, I'm sorry, AD 70, the city of Jerusalem was demolished. Not one stone upon another, just like Jesus said. And miraculous, something miraculous had happened, though. Hmm? There was a gate. There were many gates. But there was one particular gate, a, 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 a large gate that opened by itself. Hmm? Josephus said that gate, it normally took 20 men to open and close it. And to bolt it down. And 20 men. But it opened by itself. Which the Romans took as a sign that God had given his blessing. Hmm? To the Roman soldiers, the enemies of Israel, hmm? the enemies of Israel, inside, inside, church folks now, inside, for the murderer's heart, for killing his prophet, whom he had warned. He had sent them to warn them over and over again, but their blood was crying out. Do something, Lord. You got to do something. Over two million people were in this city at the time of Passover. It's Passover seven. Two million, they come from everywhere, far and beyond. Two million at this particular time. And the rebels would not allow them to leave. They wanted to leave before this. And, and Titus agreed to let them go. If they come out, we won't bother them. Let them just come out. 
but he, they wouldn't let them leave. They killed many for trying to leave, trying to leave, they're trying to surrender. Hmm? Millions died. Thousands were taken captive. Thousands were sold into slavery. Hmm? Thousands were taken back to Rome to serve as servants. And the amusement in the arenas. Josephus said the number of deaths exceeded all previous, all the years of their existence. The numbers of dead exceeded all those that were uh, happened in the hands of, by the hands of man or even by God, he says. Hmm? But now, the point is, Jesus saw all this before it happened, and he wept over it. He saw it because he's God, hmm? and his heart was truly broken. And after he lamented, he lamented about it. And he said these words in the very next verses, uh, Matthew 23. Look at it again. Now, as we get ready to close, look at Matthew 23. Listen at Christ now. He said these words, Matthew 23, 38. Behold, your house, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth. Hmm? You won't see me again till you shall say, blessed is he. Got to accept me. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In other words, Christ had left their house. Hmm? And exactly, what does that mean, Pastor? What does that mean? Well, when will Israel see Christ again? When? When? Well, on Monday, God's will. God's will now. We're going to bring you part three. Praise God. And we're going to look at these very important verses, these two verses, 38 and 39. We're going to get into them. We're going to get into them. Praise God. Hopefully we can do it in, in, in one session. Maybe not. I don't know. Praise God. But we're going to look at these important verses. But now as I close, I want to remind you that are listening right now, the consequences of our unrepented sin. See, Jesus came and died and rose again for our sins. And, and, and at the very moment, he's calling all men. He's calling all of us to repent. For we all have sinned, Paul said, and come short of the glory of God. We're all, in, some, in a sense, responsible for the murdering of Jesus. That's why we all have to repent. See, it was for our sins that he was murdered. Hmm? And for the murder of millions of innocent souls in the womb. Hmm that we have sanctioned, that we uh, take taxpayer money and pay for them to encourage people to kill their babies in the womb. Their blood is crying out, yes, for justice. And they're going to get justice. Justice against those who are promoters of this uh, dastardly act. Uh, uh, and, and, and you do nothings, say nothings on the sideline. Hmm? Except you repent, we shall all likewise perish. Let's bow here. Father, I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for this, another opportunity, the Lord, you've given me. Now, Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit might touch the hearts of your people today, Lord, that we might submit to you, that we might repent of our sins and give you the praise and the glory that you so rightfully do. And Lord, we'd be so mindful to give you all the praise. We'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, if you like this video, go over, hit that like button over there, and then subscribe. Why subscribe, Pastor? Because I want you to help me to spread this word. I want you to help me. You that have your own uh, uh, channels here on, on YouTube and on your channels on the Facebook and all the rest of them, won't you help me? Praise God. If you believe this word is from God, help me by spreading it and with in the uh, uh, the veins and the opportunities you have on your uh, uh, broadcasts. Help me do that. Amen. Praise God. But we are owned. Praise God. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And uh, uh, um, we, 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 we are, we're available. Sermon Audio. Praise God. We're available. But help me spread this word. Praise God. And let God be glorified. Let God be true. Praise God. Let every man be a liar. And until Monday when we come again, praise God, and when you bring you part three, praise God, part three, then you pray with me. Pray with me that God will speak to the hearts of his people and God be praised. Amen. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. <laughs>